Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing well today. So we've got a very big game tomorrow against the Arsenal and I think this is probably the first time in a long time that Liverpool are going into this game as the underdogs really, aren't they? You know, Arsenal have hit the ground running this season. Arteta's really turned it round, whereas we seem to have done like a bit of a back step. There's multiple reasons for that. Lack of investment from the owners. Has Klopp become a little bit stubborn with certain players, you know, showing loyalty to players that are potentially going past it now. Sticking with a formation that clubs have potentially like figured out on how we play. Like Carlo Lancelotti said, the other day that Liverpool in the Champions League final was probably the easiest team they had to prepare for in the Champions League just due to knowing how we would play and what to expect from us basically and so I think even Klopp acknowledged that the other day where he turned around and said like yeah clubs for years have figured out how we've been playing but as long as we're playing our A game then we'll be okay but obviously aging players, players not potentially giving their all you know, we've been found out, been found lacking. So we did have some positives though, like over in the Champions League game the other day against Rangers. I think the formation change definitely helped us a lot. It really did. And to be fair, I was very surprised that Klopp would even do it. I found Klopp to be very stubborn. He's used the 4-3-3 pretty much since he came in and I didn't think he would change from it. In all, from being perfectly honest with you, I really didn't. You know, whether you see this formation as a four-two-three-one or four-two-four, like whichever way you see it, it's a good change, and I'm willing to embrace it and give the time, the team time to work out the kinks that potentially would happen with like a new formation. Because I think Klopp did mention himself that they'd only had like one session with it before the Rangers game, and the positives we got from that. You know, you've got to take into consideration the opponent we were playing against. You know, we were playing against Rangers. So there is that as well to be keeping in mind whilst, you know, taking some positives from it. There are a few things, though, that I would potentially change with this. And it's not the formation in itself from which what we played with against Rangers. I'd keep that for Arsenal. It's the personnel potentially swapping them over a little bit because there's number one for me is I would potentially try Thiago out on the right because it goes like under the radar a little bit you know Thiago's tackling ability when he first joined us he, he was getting you know getting booked left right and centre giving away ridiculous fouls but he seems to have like taken that under his wing learnt a little bit under clock and become so much better at it and because we're being found for wanting down that side you know with Trent bombing forward and Trent not being the best at defending and Salah sticking a bit more out to the win and not really tracking back as much as he had done. Like he did do it in one of the other games, but you know, as, as an overall, he doesn't track back as much. We need somebody there who can get a tackle in. Someone there who's got the ability to just do that. So I would potentially think putting Thiago out on that side could be the answer. Like... But I know it would bring negatives as well at the same time because we'd lose that crossfield ball over to Salah, you know, the ball to find Trent from the other side of the pitch. And would we then just move the problem to the left-hand side if we played, say, Henderson, for instance, over that side in the two, if we played Henderson again, not Fabinho? I don't think we would because I, th I do think Shimikas who probably will play against Arsenal and Robertson are a little bit more good at defending than Trent is. But I think it's, I, I would, for one, try it out, see what happens. It's probably not Thiago's natural fit, but, you know, he, he plays centre mid. He's a world-class player. Let's just try him out and see if it does help us be a bit more defensively solid on that right-hand side. I'd also stick with this formation because I think it would get the best out of Carvalho and potentially Elliot as well. Because I think Elliot on the right of a three seems to lack the tackling ability to throw a tackle in, you know what I mean, and win the ball and get box to box. Whereas I think if we play is the four, two and then the three, you play Carvalho or Elliot as the central three, they're going to be more attacking going forward. 
you know, linking up with the striker, getting into the box, being dangerous. That was Carvalho's game when he was at Fulham, a bit more of a natural fit for him. So I really do think we should probably stick with this and stick Carvalho in as uh, the number 10 role instead of being out on the win like, um, you know, Diaz, for instance. And I just do think as well, though, playing this formation will show our lack in depth up front because... If you play in this formation, for instance, and you play the same four that we had against Rangers with Jota behind um, Nunes, then who are you going to bring on from the bench? Who's going to change the game a little bit? I know I've just mentioned Carvalho there and Elliot, like potentially, but you know they're still young and learning. You got Firmino, but he'd probably come on as a replacement for potentially Jota who was playing in the middle like a, if we play that formation Firmino could drop into the 10 for me and not play as the number 9 but if you know what I mean like we, we would be lacking a bit of depth there on the bench so that would be something else that would need addressing in the in the next window perhaps for instance so us Liverpool fans would never be happy you know we'd be, we've been complaining about the midfield we reduce the number of midfielders we're playing play more attackers oh we need some more attackers now because we haven't got enough to cover <laughs> like you know it's just one of them things that we, all Liverpool fans seem to go through at the moment and just to finish it off as well I, I think that formation change would get the best out of Nunes because he would have players a lot closer to him to be able to play off he'd have like a number 10 like say Cavallo Elliot Jota Firmino behind him giving him them balls you know where he can beat a defender with his pace because I do think the link up play that we, we do in the 4 3 3 is just not his game like it, it is not what he's about and because we play that formation with a Firmino with a Jota it's in the players heads where I kind of think they've been playing at the minute where they pass the ball to Nunes and they've got no idea what he's going to do with it so they're kind of like here you go see what you can do with it type thing but when they played in this formation there was more of them going forward. So Nunes had, I don't know how to describe it, a bit more space to himself, if that makes sense, even though there was an extra body there. So he could get into the position that is more natural for him on the last defender and just get that ball so he could go past. And, you know, he had them like instinctive shots, that, especially the one, you know, where Jota had the, the shot saved or blocked and then Nunes just instantly was there. Bang, had a shot within like the first minute and the keeper obviously pulled off a great save. So I think this formation could potentially get the best out of Nunes and I do think it would be the best chance we've got of getting anything out of the Arsenal game. If we play the 4-3-3, the tried and tested, I think we'd get torn apart. But if we play 4-2-3-1 or 4-2-4, probably play Thiago and Fabinho, not Henderson. Be a bit more solid at the back in, you know, to, to hold them there. But then you'd have more players going forward with the license to get around and Nunes being more um, instinctive, Cavallio being in a more natural number 10 role. I just think that could be the way forward, guys. And also, it, it does kind of negate the whole midfield problem we've got at the moment. If we only play the two of them, I know it sounds like it doesn't because it's just two instead of three. But if we play two that are holding, it makes us more solid at the back. It would kind of solve the Trent problem that we've got with the defensive side down there and we would have more creativity because you'd have like Carvalho, Elliot, Firmino or Jota giving a bit more freedom to be a bit more further forward rather than having to trap back as they would do if they were playing like in the right hand side of the midfield. Anyway guys that's my thoughts for today. I'll probably do a review video um, tomorrow after the game. Let me know your thoughts down below on this formation change and if you think anything I've just said makes any sense. And if you've not already, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.